Has the time come for universal basic income? From being a niche initiative or thought process that only a few people have understood and embraced, basic income initiatives have enjoyed experimentation all over the world over the course of the past 10 years. And with the pandemic, they have seen a decisive acceleration and a rollout in many different nations. If you think about it, basic income is part of a long wave of civil rights and human rights that are progressively recognized and then become an ingrained and accepted part of what it means to build a humane society. Examples are universal education, a pension and a healthcare system. None of these were accepted as part of a life lived with dignity, a life full of opportunity as recently as 200 years ago. But society has become, on one hand, rich enough to recognize their possibility and aware of the positive consequences if they were adopted and implemented. Today, it is almost unthinkable that a modern nation would not implement and even impose a school system that every children must go through in order to learn what it means to be an active and prepared participant in the society. Similarly, it is almost unthinkable that a nation would not implement and make available a healthcare system that is both effective and affordable for everyone. The fact that, for example, the United States is one of these nations not believing in universal healthcare for all of its residents is an amazing counterexample among one of the most developed nations. Or that, with a shared and mutualistic system, those who work should not set aside part of their income in order to care for those that do not work. It is today very natural that those who work through schemes that are implemented nationwide set aside part of their income for those who cannot work, supporting them either because they are old or they are disabled or for any other uh, reason. And that, I think, is enough to let you understand that the number of processes that we have in place in order to design and embrace further civil and human rights can be analogous to the ones that we have already seen in action in the past. So you have to be aware of what is going on today and not fall into the trap of those who try to ridicule basic income initiatives with fairly primitive criticisms, uh, fallacies that can be dismantled easily. One of the criticisms is that we just cannot afford basic income initiatives, especially if they are universal. Well, it might have been the case that we couldn't afford them in the past. But there are plenty of things that we can afford and a fraction of those things 
is enough to start financing basic income initiatives. For example, we can afford, apparently, very large military budgets. And these military budgets are justified by societies in wartime, but are these military budgets justified in peacetime? And shouldn't we work towards peace to strengthen and, as a consequence, military budgets to shrink? Can't we liberate resources that can be allocated better then? Also, the economy is not a closed system. As we uh, build new knowledge and we apply that knowledge, we become more effective and efficient. We have more resources that we can decide to allocate in order to build inclusive systems of support. Another objection is that if we implement basic income, then people will just do nothing. They will be lazily, lazily watching um, series on their couches and uh, all the initiative will be extinguished and no one will strive uh, to make a living because they will not have to. This is very offensive and very demeaning towards so many of us, maybe most of us, maybe all of us, because we have drives that do not need the kick in the butt for the fight of survival. We don't need to be told that it is wonderful to learn, it is wonderful to create, it is wonderful to produce for our own benefit and the benefit of others. Without having to do that because otherwise we wouldn't survive, we would suffer hunger or, or even die. So it has been actually measured that basic income initiatives spur women to better their condition and prepare to enter the workforce, spur people to learn a new skill that they can deploy usefully, and of course allow those who are so inclined to invest their time to help others with their knowledge, with their skills, uh, in philanthropy, in volunteerism, in common endeavors that not necessarily need to be driven by a profit motive. Now, basic income is being tried out. It is being tried out out of necessity in nations that have been heavily impacted by the pandemic in order to allow people to make ends meet. And it has been quite amazing to see societies as profit-driven as the United States, as Darwinian in their social programs as the United States, to implement these kinds of transfers to segments of population who needed them, counter to what has been the dominating economic paradigm of the past 40 years. Started with Reagan and termed Reaganomics, the so-called trickle-down economics sustained that you should incentivize the top percentiles of society to have more economic resources because they are the drivers of economic initiative and as a consequence they will create more businesses, they will create more jobs and the resources that you make available at the top will arrive at the bottom as well. This has been completely disproven. It has been a complete fallacy. It is a bankrupt strategy, unless 
the strategy has been since the beginning to increase and exacerbate to the extreme social inequality, income inequality, wealth inequality. The rich bought art, bought castles, bought real estate, accumulated a lot of possessions, both material possessions as well as equity and stocks driving up the stock market. But they did not necessarily, with some important exceptions, use the additional resources to run the kind of risks that are required to create new enterprises that give work to thousands and millions of people. So we do need the opposite. Rather than the trickle-down economics of the past, we need something grassroots that is able to enfranchise, empower and emancipate people who then can use their own individual judgment on the third and unfettered and potentially uncontrolled to apply their financial resources to the directions that they seem the best, they deem the best. Universal basic income may not be implemented rapidly and everywhere, but variants of it are being tested and rather than disappearing progressively, these experiments are bound to be larger and larger and implemented in wider and wider places until a point where looking at the map you will realize that the countries not having basic income schemes not having universal basic income schemes have become the exception and human societies achieved a further evolutionary step in making a life of dignity available to all. At that point, people will be able to work, not because they are forced to work, but because they want to work, applying their talent, creativity and skills to tasks and missions that are attractive to them, are valuable to society, and there will be always a place for those people and there will be always plenty of those jobs to cover, regardless of what basic level of wealth we start from. We will be able to do more and we will do it together. <music>